Hi, welcome to my sewing room. It's Joe here from Joe's Country Junction, and I am busy putzing around with the project. I thought I'd just uh, do a little sew along here with you to show you what I'm up to. Um, this is one of those things that I am super frugal. I like to um, use all of the scraps that I can possibly use. I'm totally a scrappy girl. So I was making my uh, oversized flying geese quilt that I showed you in a previous video. We'll put a link for it down below. And when I was making that, I ended up with a whole bunch of little leftover triangles because I was using a companion angle ruler to cut my pieces. And when I did that, I ended up with all these little triangles. Most people would probably throw these away um, I'm not most people. <laughs> so they were all sitting there in a pile and I was going to throw them in with my other stash of um, leftover triangles. Um, these are similar to triangle pieces that you might have from after you sew your binding strips together. Well, these were just leftovers from after I was using my companion angle ruler. So they were all together. I always keep all of them together. And I just thought, well, hey, maybe I should just see if I can come up with something to do with them. And so I did. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I can kind of give you a little sneak peek. I did go into EQ and try to draw up um, some kind of design with them. And this isn't the best for you to see what I'm doing, but this is kind of my idea. I'm going to use all of those little pieces and they're going to be wonky and silly and not all the same. And that's totally okay because that's kind of the look that I'm going for in the quilt. And I did sew up a few blocks. Um, I'm, the quilt's going to be made up of five different blocks, all very similar. So um, I'll show you how they work. Um, here's one maybe I need. I'm going to grab my little purple board I set these on. Um, so here's one of the blocks. I'm gonna go test and see if I can change up my lighting a little bit here in a second too. Um, here's another one of the blocks. What kind of happened is I was, um, happened to be reading a blog. I was reading uh, Dirt Road Scrapper and she was making a quilt with half square triangles. And I just thought, oh, I just love the simplicity of these half square triangles. But then I thought, um, well, maybe I could do something similar with those leftover pieces. So here's another block. You can see how how this is similar, but it's the um, diamond is kind of offset. Um, here's another block. Again, similar, but the diamond is set to the other side. And here's the last block of the bunch. Again, similar, but the diamond is set differently. So I'm just gonna throw these all together into a quilt. I really have no idea how big my quilt is gonna end up being. Um, I'm just going to start sewing it and when the quilt ends, I will end. <laughs> uh, I'll just, if I get down to the, like the last couple blocks and I find out that I need, um, three more blocks in order to square up the quilt to have enough blocks, then I'll just go dig in my stash and find something that will work. And I'll figure that out before I actually sew it all together. So if there's extra pieces like that. Um, I'll be able to figure out how to put them into the quilt without them being obvious. So to make this, you need these, all those little triangles, and you need, um, I'm using two and a half inch squares. And so I just cut them out of muslin. Again, I like to do this fairly frugally and um, muslin is much cheaper than buying a um, cone of cotton or uh, any other solid print of fabric. So I'm going with the muslin and that happens to look really good with these um, scraps anyway. The muslin is the off white color and so it blends well together. I already had it here so it's just like the perfect thing for me. This is going to be like um, a super frugal quilt because the muslin, I always buy that when I buy it. I usually buy a bolt of it at once and I go to Joann's and when they have the 40 or 50% off a uh, uh, cut, then what I do is I just take the whole bolt up and that's considered one cut. And then I go to the 
so I get like 50% off that. And then I try to go on a day where there's like a 10% coupon off your whole entire order. So I get a whole bolt of muslin and it's really cheap. And I end up using that in several different projects. I could have easily used it in this um, oversized flying geese quilt top, but um, I happen to have uh, fabric that would work for that. So I didn't need to use it for that. But I do like working with muslin. It's not a problem to work with muslin. And if you're doing something to try to make your uh, project a little bit more frugal, not, ex ex not as an expensive project, um, that's one great way to be able to make a nice quilt and just use muslin instead. I always buy a higher quality of muslin. I don't buy the cheap, um, rough stuff. I buy the nice, the smooth, um, the good quality. And if I buy it for, um, like by the bolt when it's like a 40% off and then I get like 10% off my entire order, that's the day I go and that's the day I get my muslin. So I am going to, um, kind of flip the camera around, do a couple things here and, get you set up so I can like explain a little better so you can actually see because some people don't use a companion angle ruler. So I'm going to show you how I got the pieces, these colored pieces for that. Um, if you don't have those, start saving your scraps from when you um, attach binding strips together because that's another great way to get scraps. Um, I loved it and I wanted to keep these together because I had so many that were like coordinating colors. When you work with a jelly roll, this is a great way to get them to, um, if you have just a few, even if you have some two and a half strips in your, in your scrap box, you can cut these up into the triangles that I'm using for this and you'll be in business in no time and able to make a quilt. But in the meantime, if you've never saved these before, it might be time to say, start saving them because I have a few other projects that I've done with those that um, I'll probably tell you about in future videos. So if you're gonna sew along with me, you're gonna wanna start keeping these little triangle pieces. So I'll be right back, uh, hang on. Okay, I'm here at the cutting table. I'm hoping that you can see what I'm doing. Um, what I wanted to first show you is when I use my companion angle ruler, when I was making the blocks for the oversized flying geese, I had two strips together like this. Um, imagine that they're two different prints. And I had my companion angle ruler on here like this, and I made a cut like this. Now these are all the pieces that I saved, is all of these that were like this. And those are the quilt pieces that are going into this new quilt I'm making. And so, um, I would cut down the whole strip and then if there was leftovers, I would put them with these other leftovers that I had and with pre with plans to make them into this quilt. So what I need for this are two and a half inch blocks. And remember I told you that I just had these for muslin. And then I take these pieces and I lay them on there like this. And I sew from here over to here. And I have a whole variety of them. So you can see, again, I sew from here over to here. I have a big variety of them. You can see like this is gonna make a small triangle. This is obviously gonna make a big triangle. And then they come out and I trim them down and they look like this, but you can see that the triangles are often not the same size. So like if you put these right by each other, you can see this one's much smaller than this one. So um, you have to be able to, be comfortable with a little bit wonky in order to do a project like this. That doesn't bother me at all. I love it. So I have these to sew and I have these that are already done. I'm going to pivot here, grab my other board, and I'm going to give you a little more detailed look at how this goes. I'm going to put my camera up a little bit more. Maybe hopefully you can see the whole board. Um, I don't think you quite can. So we'll move over. We'll go this way. Right here, this is the two and a half inch square, and this is my triangle on it. Here you can see that I've sewed the seam. Um, after I sew that seam there, it's attached, and I clip off the white part that's right here. From there, I go to the ironing board and I iron it, and then I bring it to my cutting board and I trim it down to two and a half inches. So that's the progression. You start with a um, two and a half inch square and a triangle, you sew that onto there. When you lay it down, you have to make sure that you can flip it back and see that it will cover the space. And then you trim the white part off 
that you iron and then you trim it down to two and a half inches and then it's ready to use in your quilt. I know that it sounds like a lot of tedious work and it kind of is, but it really fits well together into my lifestyle. Um, let's go back to the sewing machine and I'll um, just sew along and talk you through doing some of it. I'll be right back. I'm at the sewing machine. I remembered to plug my iron in today. It's over here. I don't know how much I'll be needing it, but if I need it, at least I have it. So that's awesome. Um, I, in order to have some fairly okay lighting here, I have to not turn my light on for the sewing machine because I have a big light that extends over like this and um, that I can't turn on because here I'll show it. I'll turn it on and show you how terrible the lighting gets. See, then it kind of reflects kind of goofy, I think. I don't know. I think I like this better. What do you think? Yeah, so we'll just go with this. Well, maybe this is better. Well, I think it makes it kind of hazy. So I am going to work on just trying to get this little bowl worked on and run these pieces through the machine. I already showed you, um, oh, I've got pieces falling all over. I've already showed you a bit of what the blocks will probably look like in the end. Um, I'm just gonna, once I have them into block form, I'm going to randomly uh, sprinkle them throughout the quilt. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I, I love random scrappiness, but I'm gonna show you one of these closer up so you can get an idea and see how the triangles are not the same size. You can see this little one is smaller than this one over here. You can see the corners of the red don't match. This is meant to be a wonky quilt. This one, this green one over here is much larger than the brown one. So if wonky isn't your thing, this might not be a quilt for you to make. But if um, you love using every little piece of fabric like I do, this might just be totally right up your alley. One thing that I love about this is this is such easy, easy quilting to do. And um, it's not stressful quilting all of your pieces are going to match because you go back through and you retrim them so everything's going to be good um so i have my bowl here that i'm working from it's hidden right down here under here i have my squares and i have my triangles that i'm going to be working with i really enjoy this kind of sewing when i was in the last clip of this i was explaining to you that a quilt like this is really good for my lifestyle and it truly is i'm a busy grandma um i have my grandkids at my house a lot i am a busy blogger i enjoy gardening i enjoy cross stitching so when i'm at my machine and have quilting time i like things to be quick i like things to be easy i like things to um, not cost me a lot of money and so this is a great project I often just have little snippets of time on mornings that my grandson is coming and I know that he's coming. I will uh, wake up, oh, a half an hour early and I will come up to the, my sewing room and I will feed little pieces through the machine like this and... Once my half an hour of time is up, I will clip off the, snip off the chain and I will take the chain downstairs with me. And then later in the day, as my grandson takes a nap, I will clip and trim and iron and do all the things so that by the next time I'm back upstairs again, I have a few finished little blocks. Um, speaking of me being kind of, uh, cheap and frugal when it comes to sewing, these are my favorite boxes. Um, they are from mini eclair desserts. Um, they're, yep, this one is that too. I also buy my dishwasher pods in a container like that. And I save all of those containers if I count across my sewing room right now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those little containers out, and they're all organizing the little pieces that I have. Being I make everything pretty small, I can fit a lot of little pieces into one box. And so you can see that they're filled up. I love these. They're not the 
most attractive thing in the world sitting around in my sewing room, but they are great for organizing. I just absolutely love them. And I, um, if I had to guess, I guess there's probably a couple probably downstairs on my kitchen island right now because, as I said, I'll sew a few pieces and then I will take them downstairs and I'll have them to work on another portion of the quilt downstairs. That I have this bowl here, that's very unusual. I must not have had any extra containers downstairs when I was um, getting ready to trim these because typically I always have my little mini eclair or dishwasher pod boxes. I have the worst trouble um, throwing them away because I, I always think, well, what if I had a really big project to organize? Maybe I should have 10 of them. And yeah, I have more than 10. I admit it. <laughs> There's a whole stack of them in my closet over there because I love them for organizing. I'm just putting the pieces, the triangle pieces on top of that background piece and sewing that seam. That's my main job I'm working on today. He's just getting these ran through the machine. One thing I love about this is um, it, it's like no stress sewing. <laughs> and it took very little time to cut out this quilt and have it ready to sew because um, A, the colored pieces were already cut from the previous quilt that's on the rack. Um, those pieces were already cut, so I didn't even need to uh, cut them out because they were already there. All of the fabrics were already matching because they already matched in that quilt. Everything was just already, that all that kind of prep work right there was done for me. I didn't have to dig through my fat quarter bin. I didn't have to pull them out. I didn't have to cut. I didn't have to do any of those things. The only thing I had to do to prep for this project was to cut the two and a half inch squares. And um, that's a pretty easy task. And I didn't even count how many I would need. I just cut a stack and then I started sewing because I wanted a project to do. I intended to have this just be a uh, project that was a leader and ender. I didn't have a like a great idea on what I was gonna do with them. So I was just casually sewing a few at a time when I was in between projects. I I really had no intention that this project was gonna go forward um, at full speed. Then I happened to see that blog post from Dirt Road Scrapper and I thought, oh, I really like the look of this quilt. I think I'm going to try to make one like that. And then I realized that I could do it, only use wonky um, pieces. I think it, I, I'm trying to remember if the quilt, she calls it, you make me smile or there's something smile in the title of it. And the blog is Dirt Road Scrapper. I'll probably, I'll try to put a link down below for that. I should actually stop for a second and put a, take a pen and paper and put what links I want to put on there. So I'm going to do that, Dirt Road Scrapper. And then I think I told you I would put a video link to my um, oversized flying geese. I just want to make sure I do that because I know that that can be <laughs> a little bit frustrating for all of you if I say I'm going to put a link below and then I don't do it. So I want to make sure I, I do that for you. I like to make things as easy as I can. So from there, um, how my idea for this came about was I got a bunch of these sewed then, and I laid them out, and I sent a picture to my daughter, Kelly, who Kelly and I used to do a lot of um, quilt work and quilt designing together. Uh, we published a book, and we have lots of uh, quilts and magazines. I'm the main person that does the work with all of that now, but Kelly does um, 
uh, great with offering me some tips or if I need something like power out string piecing, she's a great help for that. And so um, I sent a picture of to Kelly of a bunch of these finished triangles laid out all on a board. And Kelly messaged me back and she said, oh, what would happen if you took the red pieces and made a pinwheel and put random pinwheels throughout the quilt? Well, wow, I really love that idea. But when I went down, when I went to give it a try and I thought about it, I couldn't do that because these triangles, they don't fill the entire half of the triangle. So the points wouldn't touch of the pinwheel. So then I thought, well, what if I turn them around and put um, diamonds in the center or diamonds throughout the quilt instead? And so that's how I ended up coming up with blocks that would have a diamond in them like this. And so they're just randomly going to be thrown throughout there. And so even though Kelly is a busy mom and a busy nurse, she's still a great support to me to um, feed me some ideas. <laughs> a great person to bounce these ideas off of, which I really, really love having someone in my life for that. My other daughters are pretty good, but Kelly has a real sense of quilting, so, um, and she's really good at it. She's just a busy mom with a uh, four-year-old daughter and two-year-old twin boys, so it makes it hard to find time to quilting for quilting when you have um, all of those people in your life. Oops. Yeah, sometimes these pieces stick together. I've got some kind of small pieces here and I'm gonna feed them through the machine. They're smaller triangles than the other ones, but I think I'm gonna probably need them to bring this quilt up to size. I've just, so far, I've had a fabul fabulous time with this project because even if I do sew one and it's off after I iron it and wonky, um, if it's too wonky, I just throw it in the garbage. And that has only happened, I think, twice in my whole bucket. And if you've listened to my videos before, you know I'm not afraid to fudge something a little bit. So after Kelly had that idea to make the pinwheels and I changed that to making diamonds instead, um, then I kind of thought, oh, I want to sit down with EQ and see what that would look like. And I do love EQ. Um, I was able to draw the quilt out. I, it won't be anywhere near this big because for this, I think I was going to need, I think I was going to need 144 blocks and to make it 74 by 74. And I won't be, I won't have enough pieces to make that. Um, I was able to draw out the blocks individually like this which was kind of nice. Um, I was able to see what it would look like with just random blocks all over, which was kind of nice. Uh, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants girl. So once I get all of these pieces made, I'm gonna make all of the red diamonds. And then after all of the red diamonds are made, I'm going to um, make the red diamonds into the quilt blocks. And then I'll see how much I have left over. And with those, I will make the nine pack. And here, let me grab so you can see. Oh, here, here. And the nine patch blocks look like this. And so I'll just fill them in, scatter them out throughout the quilt after I get to that point. And as I said earlier, if it turns out that um, I need... 80 blocks or something like that to complete this quilt and it turns out that I only have 79 then I'll go dig through my scraps to try to see if I can find some more matching fabrics that might work and I would have enough to make a couple extra blocks. I don't mind doing that at all 
And that's kind of what I mean when I say I um, fly by the seat of my pants when it comes to sewing. I don't like to take time to count and figure things out. I just like to be doing whatever the project is rather than um, counting and organizing it. And I know for some people that would drive them completely crazy. And actually my daughter Kelly is one of those people. Because when we were designing quilts together, she'd often say, well, how many pieces of this do I need? And I'd be like, mm, I don't know. I didn't take time to count. And she would, you know, um, call me back on the phone a little bit later. And then she would be like, well, we need 127. And I would be, okay. You know, for me, I just kind of cut and pack and go until the quilt is to the stage that I want it to be. You can see that this is super easy sewing. This would probably be good sewing if you were um, teaching someone to sew because it gives them, um, like this doesn't need to be perfect. I know a lot of you are um, fearful of triangles or don't like triangles. This would be a good way to get you uh, involved in a project too that technically uses triangles. But really, once you sew, once you put the piece onto here and you're sewing from here to here, you're really just sewing a straight line. You're not really even sewing a triangle. You're just sewing a straight line so you don't need to be worried or feel uncomfortable about it because this is, again, um, I have really no money into this quilt anymore at this point except for the muslin. As most people would throw these scraps out. So, um, if you make an error here or there, it's, it's no big deal. I love how the red's going to, like, um, put a little splotch of color. If you've read my blog, which is Joe's Country Joe's <laughs> Or if you've been watching my YouTube videos, which my channel again is Joe's Country Junction, then you know that uh, I love stress free quilting. I love frugal quilting. And my favorite color is red. <laughs> so even my grandkids, I always, they always tease me and say, well, red's your favorite color. <laughs> My goal today, I don't know if we'll do it all on camera or if I'll be finishing it up later, is to get all of these little triangles that are left. I don't have that many that are left um, to get those through the machine here. Because once I kind of get the itch to sew something, um, watch out. I'm really on task and really wanting to sew it. This is a big one. The scraps came to me from a blog reader. Um, initially, I had some hourglass blocks that my daughter Kelly had given me. They were the first blocks that she had sewn and they were um, very wonky and very out of shape. And she was cleaning out the house. And she was going to throw them straight directly into the garbage. Well, Frugal Me would not let her do that. I said, can I take them home and I'll do something with them? And she said, sure. And so that's what started that quilt. And then a blog reader had sent me more fabric that was good coordinating fabric with that. Only she had been to a warehouse or a place, a factory where they cut pre-cuts. And when they cut the pre-cuts, there's a strip along the side that goes with the selvages that 
they don't cut. So for instance, if they were cutting um, 10 inch square packets and they had the fabric stacked up on top of each other and they were going 10, 10, 10, 10, when they got to 40, whatever was left would be leftover fabric and they couldn't use that. So those are cut off and then people are allowed to go and buy those strips. Well, a blog reader bought strips and then she kindly sent them to me. Well, I use those as the coordinating fabric for the quilt behind me. And then the leftover trimmings became pieces that I'm now using for this quilt. So this was, that was a wonderful gift. Um, thank you very much to that blog reader who sent the strips my way. Uh, also in that box that, well, I had, ha I had kept those in a box for a long time, just a small tote like this. And um, as I would go thrift store shopping or things like that, or somebody would send fabric that was just strips and scraps, I would throw coordinating <laughs> scraps into that bucket. And... Then when it came time to make this quilt and to make that quilt, I went through that bucket. I have grabbed a few pieces from that bucket and added them to this as well. Like there was some big, oh, triangle pieces that were probably, I don't know, eight inch triangle blocks. Someone must have used them for setting triangles in a quilt and I took those and I cut those down into pieces that I could use for this little triangle scraps I could use for this as well. I always have kept all of the pieces when I join binding strips together. And so if I need more pieces, I'm getting, I could probably go dig into my containers for those as well. These little pieces, um, if you don't use them for something like this, um, there's other quilts that I've made that I can show you that they work great for. Um, but if you don't use them for a project like this, they also work great for paper piecing. Um, not paper piecing. Yeah, paper piecing. Or foundation. <laughs> Oh, sounds like my neighbor is going to mow their lawn. Or maybe not, because my neighbor, there's uh, three boys that live there, and they're a very, uh, oh, I don't know, mechanically inclined family. So they have four-wheelers and all those sorts of things. So I'm guessing they're mowing lawn, but they could be working on a four-wheeler too. Okay, my bowl is getting smaller and smaller, and that's awesome. I'm just curious how big my quilt is, and maybe you're curious too. As you can see, this is like really easy, stress free sewing. I do love beautiful, fancy, intricate quilts that have lots of paper piecing. In fact, um, there has been one quilt that I've really wanted to do. It's um, foundation pieced and it's big feathered stars. And oh, I bought the book years and years ago. I think I probably bought the book 10 years ago and I still have it. And I still think to myself, oh, I would just love to do this. But I also think about all the work that would go into making the copies of the foundation piecing, pulling out all the fabrics, buying enough fabric so I've got the same fabric for the background. And then I look at these little scraps that are sitting here already almost 
almost ready for me to dive into and all I have to do is cut the squares, I think to myself, oh, I'm pretty lazy about that. I think I'd rather just cut the squares and work on this project. So there's, it's wonderful in the quilting world that there's something for everyone. There's something for someone who wants to make elaborate, beautiful art quilts. Um, there's something for someone who loves um, applique. There's something for someone who loves paper piecing. There's something for people that love English paper piecing. And there's something for someone like me. Likes quick or simple um, designs or projects that are frugal. Anyone who got this quilt as a gift would never know that um, you made it out of simple leftovers. And the main reason of that is because the pieces of the fabric all coordinates. One of my favorite things in the world was when I was um, making a lot of pre-cut quilts because uh, we used quite a few pre-cuts for um, projects when we put them in our book or we used quite a few pre-cuts when we had uh, projects in magazines. And so I would love, my favorite thing was after the big um, pretty quilt for the magazine was done, was that I would take the leftovers and do something completely different with them. I've done that with several different projects and I just super enjoy the chance to be able to do that. My mom grew up, uh, well, she was born in 1928 during the Depression. And her family didn't have much money and there was lots of kids in the family. And I think she uh, passed on some of her um, frugality or the making something from nothing type attitude. So I I appreciate that because I love, I love that I'm that way, but, and I love it even though sometimes people sometimes think I'm kind of silly that I'm working with these <laughs> tiny little pieces, but it's kind of fun too, though, because people know me now that I like tiny little pieces. So lots of times people who don't want to use pieces like these often send them to me in the mail and I love it. I absolutely love it. And I very much enjoy the challenge of I have this, what can I add to it to make it something more? I have other videos planned to show you other projects that you can make using these little tiny bits and pieces. So if you're inclined, um, start saving those tiny little triangles that are left over when you're doing your binding strips because I'll have more. Because my plan is to have more projects with them for you. Because I seriously have uh, a lot. <laughs> A lot that need attention. And my bowl is coming to an end. I only have this last one piece left and my bowl is empty. So I think that means that I'll be ending my video here. And you could see how easy it was for me to run these pieces through the sewing machine. I have a big stack here ready to go. They all need to be trimmed down and then I'll be taking them to the ironing board. Um, I'll be cutting them apart. I'll be trimming off the white triangle from the backing. I'll be ironing them and then I'll be trimming them up into two and a half inch squares. And after that, they'll go into this bucket. And after that, they'll go into more quilt blocks. And so these are finishing, they'll finish off in the quilt at six inches. And right now they're six and a half inches. And I'll just be finding a way to put them all together. I'm going to make sure that all of the triangles in the background are all going in the same direction. 
So this, they can't go together like this. They'll need to go together like this. And I'll probably be back um, with another video or try to make up some kind of uh, pattern sheet so you can see the different blocks that are available to make uh, when I'm putting this together. But in the meantime, if you're so inclined, uh, cut yourself some two and a half inch squares and get yourself some pieces and get going on making your quilt. And I hope you enjoy the frugality and the mindless sewing like I do. Uh, and if not, I just hope you enjoyed visiting with me today. I love having you in my sewing room with me. If you wouldn't mind, I'd love it if you'd either like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, do all of those things. Um, your comments are so much appreciated. Thanks so much for joining me today. Bye. Thank you.